What's up guys, Dr. Ernesto Medina here, and as promised this week we're going to talk about the ketogenic diet and ketones. Um, it's been getting a lot of publicity lately, um, so I'll, take, I'll give you my take on it, and um, feel free to comment with questions um, after. Um, so, I got turned on to the ketogenic diet because in my neurology training, um, we're taught that ketones or a ketogenic type of diet is very beneficial for the brain, um, beneficial for recovering from uh, a concussion or a head injury or traumatic brain injury, um, also very beneficial for degenerative brain diseases like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, early onset dementias. Okay, um, a lot of la latest research showing that a ketogenic diet hugely beneficial for s reversing type two diabetes and even for m helping manage type one diabetes. Um, so an, an amazing amount of literature coming out on that topic of the ketogenic diet and chronic disease reversal. Um, so that's how I got turned on to the ketogenic diet and ketones. Um, so what is the ketogenic diet? It is essentially a higher fat-based diet and a low-carbohydrate diet uh, with moderate amount of protein in there. Now there's, there's tons of res resources out there and each one will tell you a different story about the ketogenic diet. Um, they are all f largely fat based. Um, you're getting the majority of your calories from fat. Um, but depending on the resource you look at, they will tell you to get your fat from dairy and cheese, um, bacon, um, things like that. And I'm not necessarily a big fan of that. I, if I recommend the ketogenic diet, I usually don't have people do dairy or minimize the amount of dairy, minimize the amount of bacon, and try to get good, clean, healthy fats um, from plant-based sources. And then you have your moderate protein, so your moderate amount of meat in there, ideally organic grass-fed meats. Um, plant-based sources of fat, um, avocados, great. Uh, coconut, coconut oil, and avocado oil, olive oil, um, all those can be used to get a good amount of fat in your diet um, without having to go towards the high cream, uh, cheese, dairies, and um, things like bacon all the time. Um, sure in moderation, but I recommend those plant-based um, saturated fats instead. Um, now the other big thing that's missing in that is the fiber count or the vegetable count. People think low carb and they avoid all vegetables, um, but really all of the carbs you are eating should be coming from vegetables and ideally non-starchy vegetables. So the fibrous um, type of veggies are the ones you want to focus on, things like broccoli and spinach, cauliflower, things like that. Uh, Brussels sprouts, um, those are the ones I recommend people focus on eating. Um, lower in sugar and lower in the starchy carbohydrates okay um, so uh, one of the big things I've been exploring recently in my office is actually the use of ketones so you can see here uh, pure therapeutic ketones is powder based ketones and basically what ketones are um, the body essentially thrives on two sources of energy sugar or glucose which is made from carbohydrates as well as um, protein. If you consume too much protein, it will convert into sugar. And then the other big energy source is ketones. Now, ketones are made by the liver from fat. Um, so, as far as an adaptation purpose, um, back in our caveman days, when there was food was scarce um, and we had to go into a state of fasting, um, not being able to eat, our body would feed off of our fat and our liver would convert that fat into ketones for energy. Um, back in the 1920s, ketones were discovered to be hugely beneficial for stopping childhood um, seizures or certain types of epilepsy. Um, even more beneficial than the medications that existed at the time and I believe in my opinion still pretty much more effective than most of the medications that exist today um, for childhood seizures. Um, but back then in the 20s, they were largely um, restricting total calorie count um, and still focusing on a high amount of fat. 
um, and it's very it was very difficult it was very restrictive for the for the kids and so it was not sustainable long term but the results they got with stopping seizures and in some cases even making their seizures go away completely even after going back to a normal diet was was amazing um, <clears throat> so now we're the scientific world has been experimenting with the ketogenic diet where it's not so restrictive as for as far as total calories um, but you focus on a higher fat lower carb moderate protein type of diet um, now some people are actually modifying it even further and calling it a modified Atkins diet where it's still largely fat based for total calories um, but a little more lenient with the protein and a little more lenient with the carbohydrate count as far as it being more just more vegetables more fiber um, great for the intestinal microbiome and for healthy bowel movements which we talked about in an earlier video all right um, so my opinion as far as the ketogenic diet is I don't think it is for everyone um, we have to have the ability to be what's called metabolically flexible. And like I said before, back in our caveman days, our cavewoman days, um, we should have been able to switch from a sugar glucose energy source to a fat ketone energy source um, when necessary. Um, but growing up on the standard American diet, filled with carbohydrates and excess sugars and sweets and refined carbohydrates and refined grains. Uh, many people have grown up their entire life eating these carbohydrate rich diets and foods and lack the capacity to convert into fat, using fat for energy. Um, I've seen this many times in a lot of people. Um, I myself I ran this experiment on myself of eating a high fat diet and it took me about a week before I was able to fully feel good and transition into a higher fat diet but for other people it can take weeks it can take months um, it varies from person to person and some people in my personal opinion I don't think ever fully adapt to a higher fat diet they just don't do well on it um, while others do um, so I don't think it's for everybody and I also don't think it's for high-level athletes if you are working out three four five hours a day um, doing cardio plus um, heavy strength training I, I I don't think the ketogenic is the most beneficial for that population as far as overall performance um, but for chronic disease issues for non-athletes it can be hugely beneficial and hugely beneficial for weight loss um, and the weight loss comes really just from eliminating the high carbs um, processed foods and focusing on keeping insulin levels in check um, and blood sugar levels in check by focusing on the higher fat moderate protein high vegetable non-starchy vegetable but lower processed carbohydrate foods. All right. Um, I think that's all I wanted to cover. If you have any questions, uh, comment below or send me a message. If you're interested in this in the powdered ketones and trying it out, contact my office. Um, some of, one of the biggest huge benefits I've noticed from ketones and the ketogenic diet is um, focus and concentration um, and energy levels. Um, I, I think I talked about this in earlier videos, which you can look back at for reference, but when we eat too many carbs, our, our energy and our blood sugar spikes and then dips, and our energy does the same, spikes and dips. By focusing on a higher fat diet, we gain control of our insulin and blood sugar spikes, and they stay steady and balanced throughout the day. So you don't crash in the, in the afternoons after lunch. Um, you don't need that coffee, that second cup of coffee um, after lunch to keep you going through the end of the day. And you wake up with more energy. And the whole day, I've noticed my productivity and my mental focus has been hugely, hugely beneficial uh, and improved with a ketogenic diet and getting my blood sugar in check. So again, any questions or comments, comment below um, and let me know what you think. Thanks.